Hi, George here, and today we're going to be taking this photograph and giving it more of a studio look using Photoshop Elements, just like that. Fairly easy and straightforward process. We'll be removing the background and then replacing that background with a new one here from inside of Photoshop Elements. If you want to work along with this project, you'll find a download link for this picture in the description. Also, if you enjoy these videos, I do videos here for Elements and also Photoshop and Affinity Photo and some other stuff. I'm going to be moving all of these videos, all my new ones, over to a new channel called HTG Photo. So if you want to keep up with all of my new videos for all of my photo and graphics projects, make sure you go over to HTG Photo and subscribe over there. Okay, let's get to the project. I'll just close down this file right here, and we'll go back to the original right there. Now, if you're working in one of the newer versions of Photoshop Elements, at this point you can go up here to Select and Subject, but I'll do this the old way for everybody who doesn't have that new feature there. First thing we need to do is to go over here to the background, right click and duplicate layer, choose OK. OK, we now need to come in and make a selection around our figure. Again, this is where you could use that subject select. But we'll just use a lasso tool here, just a standard lasso. Make sure set on new. I have my feathering here set at one pixel. And then just go up here and make a quick selection right around the figure. I'll begin fairly close, but not actually touching the figure. Just close like that. Doesn't need to be perfect. This is nothing special on this one. A little bit of a bump right there. And then you can go outside for going across the bottom. That's fine. And then up on this side and around. There we go. Again, just following the hair around. That's fine. And up around the top again. And back to the starting point. So I'm in and out a little bit. Doesn't matter. This will work out great. Now click on Refine Edge. Here's our Refine Edge tool. This is a pretty small brush size. I'm going to bring the brush size up. And you'll find the brush size right down here. I'll just bring it up just a little bit, maybe about 43. That looks a bit better. And I'll type in 50 down there. I think that's even better for this image. Over here on the Refine Mode, I'm using in the view here the overlay. This gives it kind of that red coloration. For me, this works out the best of all these different modes. That's one I always use. And I'm ready to give it just one pixel just to give it just a little bit of help on that. That's really all we need. And then come in here right up next to the hair. So you're overlapping into the hair a little bit. And then brush right along like that. And I'll usually come in and do just a couple of strokes. Now in here there's a lot of the background showing through that hair. So I'll do this just a couple of times like that. And get all those hairs in there. And then work your way around the figure here in just little strokes. And just work your way around. If you're too far out like we had right down here, just work in a couple of strokes like that. Now start out further out and then come in closer. And that'll work out great. And then same thing across the top here over the right hand side. And again come outside a little bit and then work in. And just go clear around the figure. I found it works better if you just do just little strokes like that and you don't try to do the whole thing in one big shot. And work around the whole image here, all the hair. There we go. And then around this side, and right down there. Now it came through just a little bit down here, lost a little bit of that jacket. So I'll just switch to this tool. This is the erasing tool. And I'll come down, I'll just carefully erase right along that edge. I'm just freehanding this, and that should be fine. And that just puts it back to the way it was. Okay, there we go. Now come down here where it says Output 2, and change this to New Layer with Layer Mask, and choose OK. It does two things for us. It gives us our layer and mask. If I hide the background, you can see that. There we go. And also, it gives me this as a backup copy as well. So I have my copy right here. We'll be changing the background, so I wanted to have a copy. Now, in here, it's a little bit kind of strange right around in here. A little bit of a ghosting happening. We want to have some of that. But you can bring this down a bit by going over here to the right-hand side. That's your layer mask side. And the left-hand side, all the way over here. Go over here and click on the Burn tool. I have my exposure set at about 50%. And I'll bring my brush size up a little bit here. Maybe put that back to 50 again, so same brush size. And just come in and brush in here. This will increase the contrast of that area, and that tends to sharpen up the mask on those spots that are just a little bit thick still. It doesn't take much, but I'll usually do this just around the edges of hair. It helps to do a real nice edge. Don't want much over here because it's kind of a little thin, wispy hair. So I want to have some of that showing through still. But right down here, I can bring this down just a little bit, and that will improve that look. Okay, that's all we need to have for the figure. She's fine. 
Let's now come down to the background layer down here and then come all the way down to graphics. And in graphics, I have it set for backgrounds. And this is under by type. We have several options here. By type is the top choice and backgrounds. And then just scroll down. It's a long ways down here. There it goes right down here. Notice that some of these have a blue triangle upper right hand corner. That means that these have not been downloaded to your computer yet. So if there's a blue triangle over here, you'll have to make sure you have a currently active internet connection and then double click on that. It will then download that, it just takes moments, and you can then use it to send on your computer and it's there for use as much as you want in the future. So I'm just going to double click on this. It brings in that background. There we go. Let's go back to your layers. And you see now how that background was changed. That's why I wanted to have this one saved as a backup copy. And if you want to be able to play around, try some different backgrounds, the trick here is to go to this new background, right click, duplicate that layer, choose OK, hide the background, that's when it gets changed, and then we can work with this one up here. And these new backgrounds come in as smart object layers, which will not work for what I want to do next. So right click on that layer and come down to simplify layer and this converts that into just a regular graphics layer. Now I want that because if you see right in here, you can kind of see a little thin line right here and right across here, that's where this background is repeating. And I don't want to be seeing those little lines and we can fix that easily enough by blurring out our background just a little bit. So I'll go up here to filter, come down to blur and Gaussian blur. And I have mine set for five, which I think is a really good number for this. It just kind of softens that background out. Okay. Let's now center our figure, go back up here to the figure layer, and I have my move tool selected. And I can just pull her around anywhere I want to, but I want her just basically right about in the middle, which is right there. I'm just eyeballing it, but that's about right, right there. Okay, so far so good. Now let's work on the values. She's a bit on the dark side. She was in a dark background before. You can show that again here, real dark area there. So I want to brighten her up for the studio look. And for that, let's go up to layer and come down here to new adjustment layer and go over here to levels, choose that. And where it says use previous layer, just check that checkbox, choose OK. And there's our levels controls. The left side is the darks, right side's the lights, and the middle side here is the medium values. I'll pull the medium to the left that's going to lighten things up. Right about in here someplace looks pretty good. I'll pull the whites in a bit more for a bit more brightness in the hair. You can see how the hair gets brighter there. It's just the bright side and that looks pretty good right there. And by pulling in the middle, we also lost some of the richness in the darks. So pull the left side in just a little bit and bring back in just a touch of that. You don't want to go too far or it begins blocking up like that. So just a little bit, bring back a bit of that richness. This we're also seeing a bit more of the folds in here in the shirt and that looks nicer. So there we go, get that out of the way. Okay, one last thing I want to do with this background. This is all looking really good. Let's go onto our background layer and let's put a vignette on this, kind of darken the edges around. An easy way for that is to go up to the filter menu, come down to correct camera distortion right here, and vignette, and that's this box here, just move that clear to the left, and that darkens down those corners, choose OK, and there we go. That really helps to make the figure pop by darkening down the background just a bit and darkening down those corners. Now the nice thing about this technique is I can change to different backgrounds if I want to easily enough, just hide that one, show the current background, and you can change this background as much as you want. Go back down to graphics. I could choose something else in here. We'll just scroll down a little bit and find something different. Maybe this thing right here, wherever that is, just double click on that. Brings in a new background. Or I can come down here a bit further. You can just pull down on that scroll wheel. A little different right here. This one had a download. There we go. So I downloaded that background. So easy to change these backgrounds. And this is a new download for me right there. And each time you do that, it's going to stay on that one background layer. If you want to keep this and try a few more and go back and forth, then you want to make a duplicate of this background. Right click, duplicate layer, choose OK. That one's now not going to get changed. And that allows me then to try this one or try that one or try a new background down below here. And again, I would always blur these out a little bit. So to blur it out, right click, simplify, and then the Gaussian Blur. Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. Just a little bit helps in there. And we'll finish that one off with that same camera distortion and add in that vignette. And there we go. So there's two options. There's the one, and there's the other one. That easy to do.
And if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button and don't forget to go over and take a look at my new HTG photo channel. I'll put a link for that in the description. Again, all my new stuff pretty soon is going to be moving over to that area, leaving just the gaming stuff on this current channel. And I'll see you next time.